What's up, ladies and gentlemen? How are you guys today? Welcome to another episode of Phenomenal Views. I, of course, am your host, Nick Smith, and this is my review for the George Romero's Resident Evil script. Now, I'm actually going to try and do something different with this. I'm actually going to try and do this review by PowerPoint because I honestly wanted to try to do something new with my at least my book reviews. So, uh, yes, I'm going to be doing this by PowerPoint. I'm going to be going through some spoilers, so if you do not want to know what happens in this script, I strongly suggest that you sign off now. Go print yourself off a copy because is it because it is a dang good read and I just don't want you guys to be spoiled anything so if you guys stay all right we're gonna get into it all right well welcome back I hope that you enjoyed the read so let's go through the story now originally this was George Romero's first draft it's only 97 pages but Capcom rejected this script and said it simply was not good now after me reading this I don't understand how they could have seen that and went with Paul Anderson's because Paul Anderson's I didn't care for it I have my review of it I didn't like it but pretty much I thought that George Romero did a good job now there might there might have been some things that they could have worked with but overall this may probably would have made a better movie than what we got but okay here we go So we have our characters. We have Chris Redfield, Jill Valentine, Albert Wesker, and Rebecca. Now, Chris Redfield is not part of Stars in the script. He is a farmer who who is in who is in a romantic relationship with Jill Valentine, who is a part of Stars, who has been pretty much undercover this whole entire time, but really does love Chris. So when she's in the middle of the when she's sleeping in the middle of the night, she gets a call that she has to pretty much go and gear up in her Resident Evil 1 uniform and basically go to this mansion. Albert Wesker is the Lido is the leader of the team like usual or he's the leader of Alpha team like uh, in this script and he has a skull tattoo and he's pretty much a douche right away. He's already keeping secrets. Basically whenever people say uh, what's going on why don't you tell us anything Wesker's like you will know when when I think you need to know. And basically, he's telling them that we're going to look for an antivirus in here when, in fact, he is just going to find the tyrant to sell to Umbrella. Rebecca is just part of the team who has been sent to go deal with this situation. They, this was a, I think this was a good way to do uh, the Arkley Mansion incident. And how they got to the mansion, I thought, was a really good idea. The creatures, we have the zombie, we have the zombie dogs, we have the zombie sharks, we have the hunters, we have the tyrant, and we have Plant 42, which is actually a very creepy scene that is done because they are crawling in a de uh, into, they are walking into a room and all of a sudden these tentacles come out and start killing people. And it was just, it was really good, it was done really well. I thought like the way how they described the creatures was really good for the, the hunters, for example. They are they're a combination between some insects, some animals, and robotic technology. They're annoyingly hard to kill in the game, but as long as you've got a shotgun, you're pretty good. The, the dogs are the very first creatures that they come into contact with before they enter the mansion itself. Wesker orders them to kill all the dogs, and one of the people that gets killed in the script gets killed by a zombie eating through his heart, eating through the eating through his back and eating his heart. The tyrant is encased in ice and pretty much the whole entire thing when Wesker finds a tyrant, he is pretty much trying to get all its information onto a floppy disk, but when he removes it, the tyrant starts to melt. So, I guess it was a failsafe. But yeah, and the tyrant is described very creepy and it describes him as a monster like how the tyrant is. And it, it was just a very good take. Places. We have the Arkley Mansion. We have the Arkley Forest. And we have the labs. Now the labs are the last part of the game that the player actually goes through. Whereas in the script, it is the very first part that they explore. The Arkley Forest is mentioned in the beginning. And we get some discriminations or we get some pictures of the Arkley Mansion when they are walking around or when they are trying to leave. They go through the dining room and Chris finds a clock because Chris in this script actually used to play in the mansion when he was a kid not knowing what was really behind it or what was really going on there he and his friends would always play hide and seek and he found a crawl space that he always used to hide in which eventually ended up leading to their escape 
we have more characters. Barry Burton, who is Wesker's war buddy and friend, and now in the in the script, Barry is black, but in the game he's obviously white. Um, but that weird that really wasn't a it wasn't a big change for me. I still love the character. Him and Wesker uh, are war buddies. Uh, but when Wesker starts to turn on them, Barry starts to turn on Wesker because he realizes, oh crap, what you're doing is wrong, I can't allow this to happen. Ada Wong, who is a scientist in this, now she is actually not introduced until re in the series itself, until Resident Evil 2 with Leon Kennedy. It's always with Leon Kennedy. But she married a, a scientist named Marcus who actually developed the T-Virus that was going to be used to help with the human race, I think something like with curing diseases and stuff like that and then we have brad vickers who gets if i if i'm correct brad gets killed by a zombie shark he gets scraped by one of its teeth and he eventually becomes a zombie if i'm correct if not but he has more of a plot in the script than he does in the game because in the game he flies off leaving his team whereas in resident evil 3 he is killed by nemesis and that's pretty much a lot of stuff that happens in the in the Romero script. I thought it was a good read. Now there are some cheesy lines, but that's because it's based on the first game where the voice acting was terrible, but it was still a good game overall. There was no mention of there was no quotes of Barry mentioning to Jill about how she might become a sandwich. Uh there was some good chemistry between Chris and Jill about their relationship and about what and all that they would have to do to stop what was going on. The explosion of the mansion is actually linked to Wesker's heartbeat, which was Umbrella's plan, and he is a slave to Umbrella, but all he cares about is his three paychecks. All in all, this was a very good script. It was intense. It had good scenes. I love the characters, even though some of the lines are cheesy. And it, I thought it was a good way on how Chris got into the mansion because of where he was following what was going on, and there was a town evacuation because of what was going on. And so when he found out that they were that there was a lie going on in the town, and he found the mansion, he started to wonder, oh crap, something's going on here. And like we get some stuff, like we get some creepy images, like uh, when he would feed some animals, there was a there was a fish that was laying on the rock that he left for an uh, for an eagle, and then all of a sudden it was gone, and he come he came across the first zombie. Now the differences between the destruction of the mansion is when the mansion explodes, it not only nukes the mansion, it also nukes all of Pennsylvania, whereas in the game, the mansion is the only thing that gets nuked. Now the tyrant's death is, is, is about the same in the game as it is in the book, or in the, in the script, whereas they have to shoot it with a rocket launcher just to stop it. But all in all, this was a really good script. I honestly don't understand why they didn't go with George Romero's ideas. They should have, because this honestly would have made for a better movie, and I honestly think that if we had gotten a sequel, which the script kind of alluded to there being a sequel, or there could have been, because the script basically ends with, after all the nuking, there are a couple zombies that made it out, and it just shows like them just walking on, and then it faded to black. And I thought that would have been a good way to issue a sequel. They could have mentioned the Arkley Mansion incident that nuked all of Pennsylvania, and it could have led us into this world. But all in all, guys, like I said, I know I said all in all a lot. Put in the comments below, what did you think of George Romero's script? Have you read it? Did you like Paul Anderson's film? I really want to know. Guys, I hope that you like this new idea of me using PowerPoint for my book reviews. I might even start using it to do my movie reviews. I don't know. Put in the comments below what you would like me to do. I hope you guys have had a good day, and please give this script a read. It would have made for a great zombie film. Have a good day, guys.